Did you know that the Brooklyn Bridge has been standing for over a century thanks to more than 22,000 kilometers of steel cables? But what is it about their manufacturing process that allows these steel wires to support such colossal structures? To create a cable that is strong, durable, and reliable, capable of serving in situations where life may depend on it. It all starts in iron ore mines and continues to steel mills. There, the alloys are melted at extreme temperatures, cast into billets, and then subjected to rigorous inspections before being drawn into wire and twisted to form the finished cables, ready to equip projects around the world. This documentary takes you through the entire process, from the technical details and monumental machinery to the finest operations, to explain how what appears to be a simple bundle of braided steel can last for decades in the harshest conditions. Steel wire rope was born in the 1830s, deep in the mines of Germany, when hemp ropes were no longer sufficient to support the loads. By replacing these old ropes, loads could be lowered hundreds of meters underground in complete safety, paving the way for large-scale industrial exploitation. Nearly two centuries later, this material has become established in almost every field. Each year, the world consumes more than 10 million tons of steel cables used in infrastructure, heavy industry, oil and gas, shipping, and even renewable energy. Millions of elevators worldwide depend on them, allowing skyscrapers to rise and shaping the silhouettes of our modern cities. What's truly fascinating is the relationship between their small diameter and their impressive load-bearing capacity. The twisted steel wire bundles not only provide flexibility, but also distribute forces evenly across their entire cross-section. Thus, a cable just a few centimeters thick can support hundreds of tons, a true mechanical marvel of the modern world. The steel cable's journey begins in the vast iron ore mines, buried deep underground. Powerful drills penetrate the rock to create holes for explosives. Controlled detonations fragment the rock, releasing blocks of reddish-brown ore. Huge hydraulic excavators then lift these blocks, sometimes weighing several dozen tons, and load them onto trucks capable of carrying hundreds of tons at a time. These trucks travel tirelessly along dedicated routes, transporting the ore to the surface. At the storage site, the ore is poured into hoppers before being transferred onto long conveyors. Their vibrating screens and magnetic separators remove soil, sand, and coarse impurities. The finished ore is often crushed into smaller pieces for easier transportation and subsequent smelting. Specialized rail cars and giant cargo ships then take over, each carrying thousands of tons. This extraction and preparation cycle operates continuously, guaranteeing a constant supply for the steel industry and ensuring the availability of the raw material needed to manufacture cables. When the ore trains arrive at the sawmill, the smelting process begins. Thousands of tons of iron ore, mixed with recycled scrap metal, are fed into a gigantic electric arc furnace as tall as a building. Inside, enormous graphite electrodes pass a colossal current, generating heat of over 1,600 degrees Celsius, enough to transform the solid metal into a molten mass similar to volcanic lava. To give the steel its specific mechanical properties, engineers carefully add manganese for strength, chromium or nickel for corrosion protection, and silicon to improve ductility. At the same time, bat and fluorite are added, forming a layer of slag on the surface. This slag acts as a natural filter, absorbing impurities and refining the molten metal into cleaner, stronger steel. The mixture is continuously stirred by powerful electrodes, while modern sensors monitor the chemical composition with extreme precision, ensuring that each batch meets strict standards. Once the steel is purified and its composition adjusted, it moves on to the continuous casting stage. Unlike in the past when the metal was poured into water, today it flows continuously into copper molds cooled by circulating water. Upon contact with the cold walls, the outer layer immediately solidifies, while the core remains liquid. Solidification progresses from the outside to the inside, forming billets several meters long, generally with square or rectangular sections. 
Upon leaving the mold, still heated to thousands of degrees, they are sent directly to the primary rolling mill to take advantage of their residual heat. Gigantic alloy steel rollers then exert considerable pressure on the billet. With each passage between the cylinders, it flattens and lengthens, reducing its thickness and increasing its length. The process is repeated several times, gradually transforming the billet into semi-finished bars, plates, or slabs. The high temperature keeps the steel ductile, preventing cracks, while repeated mechanical forces realign its internal structure, making it more homogeneous, stronger, and more stable before drawing. After hot rolling, the material moves onto the cold rolling line to be reduced into extremely precise wire. The red-hot bars are first cooled by a pressurized water jet, then pass between a series of cylinders that gradually lengthen and refine them. With each pass, the metal's cross-section decreases, transforming it into round or flat shapes ready for drawing. During this stage, the wire passes successively through dies of increasingly smaller diameters. Each pass makes it finer, smoother, and more consistent. This process, carried out at room temperature, requires careful control of tensile force, speed, and friction. Even the slightest variation can result in breakage or loss of ductility. In modern factories, laser sensors continuously measure wire diameter with automatic correction systems that adjust the tension in real time. The result is coils of steel wire with near-perfect precision, providing the strength essential for cable manufacturing. But achieving the right size is only half the battle. To fully meet the mechanical requirements, the wire must undergo a crucial step, heat treatment. It is heated in a furnace at very high temperatures, between 400 and 800 degrees Celsius, in a strictly controlled atmosphere. The heat modifies the internal crystalline structure of the metal, reorganizing the grain network to achieve an ideal balance between hardness and elasticity. Once the desired temperature is reached, the wire is immediately cooled by air jets or immersed in an oil bath, thus fixing its new structure. Next comes the anti-corrosion coating. Depending on its final use, each wire receives a protective layer, usually zinc or polymer. Exposed to moisture, salt water, or chemicals, this invisible shield prevents oxidation. Before being coated, the wire is carefully cleaned with a mild acid solution to remove grease and rust. It is then dipped in a bath of molten zinc or coated with a polymer heated under controlled pressure. The coating must be uniform and perfectly adherent as the slightest air bubble could compromise the entire lifespan of the cable. After this protection, the wire undergoes a complete inspection. Sophisticated sensors check its diameter to the nearest micrometer and detect the slightest deformation. At the slightest anomaly, the wire is immediately discarded. This drastic selection ensures that only the strongest wires continue their journey to the wiring workshop. There, hundreds of spools are installed on large rotating machines. By rotating around a central axis, they braid the wires together in a precise pattern. The core of the cable can be made of steel for maximum strength or synthetic fiber for greater lightness and corrosion resistance. The wires are first grouped into bulls, then several bulls are wrapped around the core to form the final cable. Throughout the process, sensors measure tension and twist angle to maintain perfect uniformity. If a wire is too tight or too loose, the machine automatically adjusts the pressure in real time. Once the stranding is complete, the cable receives a coat of oil or industrial lubricant applied by immersion or pressure spray. Winding speed and liquid flow rate are controlled to ensure even impregnation. These oils, often enriched with anti-corrosion additives, provide long-lasting protection, particularly for cables intended for marine environments. Before leaving the factory, each cable undergoes extreme testing. Tensile testing to breakage, repeated bending, dynamic load testing. Only those that pass these tests are validated. Then they are wound onto metal reels, filmed to protect them from moisture, and labeled with a traceability code. Automated cranes move these coils to the logistics area where they are loaded onto trucks or special containers, ready to be shipped to construction sites around the world. From the raw ore block to the high-strength steel cable, 
Each step demonstrates the precision and technological power of modern engineering. Behind each wire lies expertise, where every detail is important. If you like this documentary, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our content. But don't leave yet, that's not all. The rest of this video will be just as exciting, so stay tuned until the end. There are industrial worlds that we think are reserved for the initiated, but which reveal a fascinating beauty and precision as soon as we take the time to observe and understand them. What you are about to discover here is one of those fields where the power of machines and human rigor unite to transform raw materials into forms of impressive precision. If you pay attention until the end, you will see how each step of this metallic journey fits into the next to give birth to creations that seem almost impossible to conceive, so perfect do they appear. Bending steel plates always begins with careful preparation to ensure a perfectly cylindrical and flawless result. A flat steel plate is prepared with a slight excess length on each side. This excess length is essential because it allows for precise edge preparation so that the steel can be rolled into a perfectly round shape. The edges of the plate are carefully chamfered to provide ideal welding conditions, a step that requires extreme precision to achieve a uniform and robust cylinder. After this chamfering, the plate is precisely marked to guide the cutting operations. This marking task ensures a perfect fit during final assembly. To facilitate clean cutting of the steel, the plate is preheated to an optimal temperature, which reduces internal stresses and prevents cracks. The result is a clean cut where the excess is removed and the weld edges are already formed. Once this step is completed, the plate is fed into a 320-ton Swiss rolling machine, a true mechanical monster designed to transform a flat plate into a perfect 276 mm diameter cylinder. The machine exerts a colossal but perfectly controlled force, ensuring a regular curvature without altering the structural integrity of the steel. Once the cylindrical shell is obtained, it is prepared for welding. The welds are made using the submerged arc method, which allows for very fast and consistent deposition thanks to the use of two filler wires simultaneously. A protective flux covers the welding area, preserving the quality of the bath. Any excess is recovered and reused, demonstrating an approach that is both efficient and environmentally friendly. The welded shell is thus remarkably robust and suitable for the most demanding industrial environments. But the show doesn't end there, because in the same facility is a press brake capable of exerting up to 3,000 tons of pressure on 8-meter long plates, one of the most powerful in Europe. This colossal machine can bend stainless steel plates 60 millimeters thick and 7.2 m long, giving them precise radii according to the needs of the projects. Each bend is a demonstration of strength and technical mastery. And since sometimes it's necessary to go even further, a 43-ton steel plate, 150 mm thick and 2,230 mm wide, can be bent into a 5,000 mm diameter cylinder, an operation that illustrates the extreme capacity of this extraordinary equipment. Every phase, from edge preparation, preheating, cutting, rolling, welding to pressing, is carried out with absolute coordination and rigor that guarantees the reliability of the final pieces. And this is where I pause to tell you something important. If you enjoy learning about these unique industrial processes and want to support the creation of this kind of content, simply click subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. I assure you that what you're about to see next is definitely worth staying tuned in. The manufacturing of pressure vessels begins with the selection and preparation of steel pipes and plates. The pipes are cut to precise lengths using automated machines, and each piece is then numbered and marked to ensure complete traceability during assembly. Welds are made using rod and MIG processes. Rod is preferred for fine detail and precision, while MIG provides strength and speed. Each joint is welded from the inside and outside to ensure perfect resistance to high pressures. After welding, the parts are assembled with a precise fit to ensure the tank is completely reliable. Then, laser technology comes into play. Laser markings engrave and code the covers, ensuring traceability and facilitating quality control. Laser cutting then shapes precise openings to accommodate pipes, valves, or sensors, limiting additional finishing. These cut plates are then folded by three roller machines to form perfectly fitted cylinders for subsequent assembly. Each step is accompanied by strict quality controls based on European regulations so that the final products can be used safely in the chemical, 
pharmaceutical, and food industries. The manufacture of welded beams begins with digital nesting, which optimizes plate cutting to reduce waste. CNC plasma or oxyfuel cutting then produces elements with exact dimensions. These pieces are deburred and ground to remove any defects, then they are tack welded to maintain their alignment before complete welding. Cuts and adjustments are made to ensure a perfect fit, then the welders continue to create solid beams that meet structural standards. A gouging process cleans the welds and prepares the areas requiring correction. Finally, a mechanical or thermal straightening process ensures the beam's straightness. Quality controllers check the straightness, dimensions, and finish before approving the final product. In heavy-duty steel mills, steel slabs are heated in furnaces to rolling temperature and then passed between powerful rollers that reduce their thickness and give them the desired dimensions. Steel piles are formed in specialized rolling mills, which give them interlocking profiles suitable for foundations. Oxyfuel and plasma cutting are used to create complex shapes according to customer drawings, and each piece is then deburred and inspected. Ductility tests on spherical blanks are performed using hydraulic presses that apply progressive force to form rounded edges and assess the strength of the metals. The 4.5-meter dished heads are formed by cold singeing on forming machines equipped with powerful rollers that gradually descend onto the rotating part. This method ensures high precision even on large parts. At CAH Bastille, a heavy-duty forge produces ingots of up to 600 tons thanks to 150-ton electric arc furnaces, vacuum degassing, and 13,000-ton hydraulic presses capable of shaping gigantic parts for the energy, nuclear, and marine industries. The 60-ton electric arc furnace melts scrap metal using electric arcs between graphite electrodes, generating temperatures exceeding 3,000 degrees Celsius, enabling efficient and sustainable recycling. Spiral boxes for hydroelectric power plants are machined, welded, straightened, and heat-treated to ensure dimensional accuracy and mechanical strength. Hydraulic rollers weighing almost 900 tons bend 70 mm thick and 4.5 m wide plates with perfect regularity thanks to CNC control. The four roll double-nip machines produce cones and cylinders with exceptional precision. 750-ton mechanical presses form spherical plates for large-capacity tanks, ensuring regular, standard-compliant curvatures. Ultrasonic tube inspections continuously measure wall thickness using frame and ceframe systems that guarantee perfect homogeneity. At every stage, continuous dimensional monitoring allows for immediate correction of any variation and delivery of products that meet the most demanding standards. This journey to the heart of steel transformation demonstrates how the power of the machines, the rigor of the operators, and technological innovation combine to create gigantic yet surgically precise parts. If you enjoyed this immersion into the world of monumental machines and incredible industrial processes, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our content.